All right, so absolutely fantastic to be here, back here together. Uh, hectic times, busy times, of course. Is today St. Patrick's um, Day? Today is St. Patrick's Day, so happy St. Oh Patrick's Day. Oh my God, Day. that can be your new stage name. St. Saint, Saint Saint John Patrick. <laughs> Saint the John birth, Patrick? The birth a of one. a stage name, St. John Patrick. Oh, that's actually fantastic. Right. So I guess I guess welcome to Saint welcome to somebody who's watching an SIW podcast by Saint John Patrick, featuring Darius King. Featuring Darius King. Oh, wow! It is. It's nice to be talking about music again here. And I thought to start it off, I'll show you the vinyl haul. It's just one, but that I found. Yes, yeah. there you go. Yeah. His second <laughs> best album. The second yes. best album. By yes, I still I, MF Doom, MF Doom, all caps. Of course, there wasn't any insert in this, which I was a little disappointed. But it sounds great, iconic logo. Of course, I guess I guess we have we to have play. I guess now we have to show them. Like you got to put it in like as a clip on the side, like Joe Rogan does. You got to show them my my rap that I did for my work. <laughs> now that now that we just open up that can of worms. Oh yes. Oh, that's so awesome you were able to do that. Yeah, thanks for the bass yeah, track, like that. by the way. I was thinking about putting that on the Instagram. Oh, yeah. So I also don't want to dox myself. I mean, I'm kind of already doxed now that I put that the Indian music video we did out. You can just, you could easily find probably my stuff, but whatever. That's true. How is that doing, by the way, that video? It's got like 37,000 views or something like that. But nice. go watch that. Go, that's another thing. Yes, please, please go watch that because... You, I mean, all I did was the bass track, but you put a lot of, a lot of work and a lot of, a lot of time into that, and a lot of other people involved, and it came out pretty, pretty damn good. It's a lot of fun to do. Uh, speaking of that, we we had the the artist for that song. His name is uh, Ani Rude, or just Ani for Americans that can't pronounce that. Um, he he was on the show for one of our Dream Theater months that are supposed to come out sometime. I don't know. I just, I've just been so. I guess we should talk about where we've been for a little bit. Yeah. So I That's I got one. hired out of college as I think most of you know and I've just been addicted to just doing that work and I spend 24 hours a day 7 days a week just doing that. Not because it's the job is, requires that but just cuz I want to like get myself in a good spot to be able to you know provide for my family future later on a little bit it makes a little bit more money than doing this. So far at least right now. Uh, but I, I got to a point where like my boss was relax, dude, <laughs> relax. You don't need to do that. Like we get it. You're good. Um, but it's, it's almost like now if I'm not doing that work, I just do nothing. I, I don't even know what to do with myself. So what, what I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to dedicate at least like an hour every day to edit and to work on these kinds of things, whether it's making logos or editing the reviews or those kinds of things. So I'm going to dedicate at least an hour of my day to doing that from now on. Absolutely love to hear that. I'm helping out as much as I can. Yeah. Uh, and, and the stuff I've learned. St. John Patrick coming through with the, the, the what is this going to be like a bi-weekly, a weekly podcast? Uh, I guess it depends on probably weekly to bi-weekly depends on our schedules depends on what's going on that week you know if going to concerts maybe and i don't know you got stuff going on busy stuff but yeah i think weekly to bi-weekly is 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 the goal for youtube and then audio platforms as well just because uh it's really nice to see the uh, like on our discord too <laughs> and, and our other platforms just the people that are actually waiting for us to put stuff out it's a really cool feeling because there was a time where, um, I don't know, it was mostly just hate comments on uh, <laughs> on bad review styles, which they were bad review on my part. They were bad review styles, but they are still hilarious to this day. Um, but uh, I, I will, I will keep my stance on. Um, I didn't listen to. It just reminds me of our Travis Scott reviews, and you know Travis Scott is a producer as a lyricist he's okay as a producer of course and his ear for music uh, i think he's he's excellent at that um and as a human being he's downright <laughs> awful he's like one of the single worst people i've i've uh i've ever had the pleasure of knowing stuff about him i mean the whole incident at his astro world uh event in general is just terrible loss of life and then his 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 uh very 
well done apology video after that was something to behold but i've I've heard other stories too like one that was maybe you've heard it uh a while ago some producer or engineer he was working with uh has had uh, epilepsy but they didn't disclose that and during a session the person started having a, a seizure or an episode like you know fell on the ground whatever all this stuff and travis scott's response to that was to get up leave go home and then call him later and fire him and say, yeah, I can't work with weird people like this. <laughs> so this this guy could have completely died having an episode, but Travis Scott didn't want to be bothered with that and decided to leave and then fire him via telephone. So that's just another thing. And uh, I heard another story where he, um, I think I told you about it. There was like a uh, disclosure secret source where I heard all this from, but there was a legendary hip hop artist in a studio session and i do understand in the field uh you know of music and the music industry especially now that a lot of things are just so digital it's important to keep hard drives secret and safe and you know make sure nobody else is touching your stuff but um since the world only revolves around travis scott and that's how he views himself which is very obvious um in this moment that producer was working on something else in like his own room but Travis Scott just high or whatever the hell came in and saw a computer on. He's thought the highest this guy in the room. was using his stuff. He was, yeah, highest in the room. He thought it was his stuff being touched or manipulated with. And his, you know, instead of a normal response, hey, uh, are you touching my stuff right now? No, no, this is mine. Oh, okay, no problem. His response was to go be, just become belligerent and smash equipment, thousands of dollars of equipment that doesn't belong to him throw a temper tantrum and get all nasty and then issue an apology later. So yeah, he's just a terrible person. Not that that was a surprise. And that's actually kept me from really listening to Utopia recently just because I, I understand separating art from the artist and you can do that at times, I think, unless their you know, they're, they're issues are in their art. Um, obviously, Utopia is separate from him, but just me in general, I just I can't really support him after just finding out more of just how much of a loser he really is and how he treats people. But I can't take away his contribution to the trap scene and also just uh, his ear for music. Yeah, I, I don't uh, know anything about those stories. I think just fathering two kids out of wedlock and then going and dating uh, what's her face, Rat Pack or whatever oh, her name is. Yeah, that's that says a, enough for me. But uh, he's still probably my second favorite. I gave like the the slightest listen to Utopia, and you're not missing much as far as uh, I thought. The first <laughs> track going in was like uh, whatever it's called, Hyena. I think I was like, yes, this is awesome. He's just on on, on fire. Every album he puts out is just top notch hip hop, and then everything after that was just totally forgot about it. <laughs> that that album that uh, we re reacted to with your punishment for guess the song that what was it called um whole lot of red playboy cardi oh, that album yeah. single-handedly destroyed anything that hip-hop had left just like everyone decided we need to sound like this from now on yes ever even from yes. kanye on uh donda to this stuff and i haven't listened to a drake album since i was like 16 so i don't, I don't maybe he's probably did the well, same thing so you're not missing it. it's the same songs yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah dude that album is absolutely atrocious but people love that for some reason maybe all the teenagers i see people all the time talking about a whole lot of red i don't know if it's just like a torture thing or they just like listening to it because it's bad i don't know yeah that was just that was brutal absolutely brutal um i think Drake too stuff. I have a coworker who's obsessed with Drake, but he he just he's a surface level CEO of is... my company is obsessed with Drake. Like my my boss is obsessed with Drake for some reason. Uh, it, it yeah, it, it it obviously like what he he has all the money and the connections where he can have a perfectly engineered album that's just going to be played on the radio. Like that's no I don't think there's any debate on that, but uh, the debate is it's boring. It's just lifeless. It's the same crap over and over again. He has nothing to say because there's nothing to say because he doesn't need to say anything. And then he puts out like four albums a year. And then now he's going to go on a break or something like that. And then I remember one of the dogs, all, one of the dogs, all, for all the dogs is what it was called. I remember that was coming out. And he's like, oh, I'm tired of people coming up to me and saying, what about the old Drake, this and that? And he's like, this is going to change it. And the album was exactly the same as the last like two albums. It was nothing <laughs> different in any any 
word of the You've sentence. become quite a hip hop maven here. I, I wouldn't have uh, pegged you for that. I'm just think about when we started this channel. I think we kind of flipped. I think that's that's a big reason why you wanted to abandon your stage name of Metalhead, which I don't know. Are people caught? I don't think people are caught up on that because I haven't finished those video videos yet. Oh, that's right. Me wow. Metalhead yeah. is the now that he was the artist formerly known as Metalhead. Now I guess he's Saint John Patrick. But I think I think now I'm Metalhead. So I. I don't have the glasses and the hat here anymore. I was gonna put that on. Oh, I'll have to mail it to you. Yeah. I went to. Um, I went to. I think I told you I went to Indiana for a Purdue game with my uncle. He's like a diehard mm -hmm. Purdue fan. He went to Purdue and he got his cool seats to the Ohio State game. And I met there one of Maynard James Keenan's friends. Your guy Maynard James <laughs> Keenan. Oh my yeah, boy. Yeah, he's like yeah. super good friends with him. And so I just started getting back into Tool, and I'm thinking a uh, part of the time that I'm going to set aside from work is also going to be to write some songs, write some lyrics. And I, I'm taking inspiration from one of these songs. It's actually one of my favorite Tool songs right now, not sarcastically. It's called, have you ever heard it? It's from 10,000 Days. It's called, um, what's the name of it? It's not Vicarious. Vicarious is good too, but it's, um, oh, that's the one Ro I like Rosetta Stoned. It. Have you ever heard that one? I don't one? know if I've heard that. Vicarious I have, and I do love Vicarious. That is a great one of the things. No. Yeah, one of the things I wanted to incorporate in some of our music is uh, a lot of the the AM radio screaming that I know you like from, from Maynard James Keenan and just over top of just the same drop D riff the entire time. Yeah, I mean, that's... I know. I, that tool... I, I actually rewatched re -watched our tool review of... Uh, what was it? What's the album with 46? Anima. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, just the parts where, like, I went on, like, tirades, and then you did, like, the voiceover. That was funny as hell. Uh, because it's just really... I think the reason I was so angry is because from hearing their singles, I was so excited going into it, expecting so much more. And uh, what's the guitar player? Adam Jones is yeah. the guitar player? Or, yeah, it just, like, he disappointed the hell out of me. Did you know he's, he's uh, disappointed the Did you know he's a Hollywood me. special effects guy? For you to know that's, that, yeah, I look, I looked it up the other day. He actually went to school for you know filmmaking and video effects, and he has credits on Terminator Two, Jurassic wow. Park, and like a bunch. And you, there, there's videos of him, or there's the pictures online. You could look it up of him working on the Terminator, like with the T1000 with the bullet holes and everything. There's pictures of him working on all that stuff. That was his main career. He just also happens to be really, really good at guitar and makes smash hits and those kinds of things. That's actually that's actually really, really sick. He had that uh, thing with Alex Lifeson recently, didn't he? A picture together? I think I Something that like that. I mean, one of the things that I like about Adam Jones is that he, sure, his, his writing is a little bit more simplistic than a John Petrucci or one of these other prog guys, but he's able to, like that song is a great example, Rosetta Stone. He'll, he's able to take like the same three or four notes and turn them into different time signatures and make a 10 minute song out of like the same three or four notes and you never lose interest the whole time yeah no that that is a skill in and of itself i just i i, I still remember what song was it off that album i think it was the last song i just remember he had i don't know who did the engineering for that but it was just such a stupid like i get they were trying to be artistic with it but art they had in the mix it, art that's right <laughs> they had the uh they had the, the 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 damn uh what was it the way they mixed it it was like the simplistic just like few chords were right in your face and then he had this sick like killer guitar solo that was so quiet in the mix and like put in the background like trying to be like that artistic uplifting thing that i was like this is the dumbest thing i've ever heard yeah, like i understand like the thought of like oh i know i'll flip it around because usually it's the other way around but it was so quiet, like I had to tune into it. I was like, it's so quiet, you might as well have not even put it in this mix. So that's what annoyed me so much about it. But Danny Carey is fantastic, uh, in all sense of the of the word. Fantastic he is. He is fantastic. His drumming is sick. Um, I don't remember that. I just remember you being really pissed off at the title track. Yes, the title track. And you didn't like where he, the part where he learned to swim. You, you felt aggravated by that. You were kind of hoping <laughs> that he was drowning out there. I forgot about that part. Or what was the song with uh, where he was plucking the strings? Oh, the above Gary the with the, eye, the Gary the eyeballs. Gary. Yeah, I forget, I forget yeah. the name of it, but I remember that one. That was cool for ten seconds, and then he's like, "What if we did it for two minutes?" And I was, that's when I was like, "Okay." Um, which I guess leads me to my question for Dream Theater, of course, because 
I, I have a mixed bag for it, but I guess if you had to give a broad view to start of your overall like expectation of like sitting down listening to whatever that new album will be when it comes out maybe end of this year beginning of next year uh, it's going to be like, either the best album they've released since um like 2005 or 2003 or it's going to be a colossal train wreck there's not going to be any in between <laughs> Uh, although it won't be as much of a train wreck as the astonishing, I can guarantee that. Oh my god! If we got astonishing, because what because astonishing is is like a train. Too. This is just a hate podcast, I guess. Correct. Astonishing is just is yes. is, is like it's not just it's not just a train wreck. It's also a, a cringe train wreck, if that's even a, th- a cringy train wreck, if that could even be a thing. That's what the astonishing is. I remember sitting through listening to all that start to finish, and I yeah, we have it on video. Probably, we do, <laughs> and I retained probably nothing from that <laughs> entire album because it was, except the part where uh, the person got shot in the story. That was so funny. Is like, what was it? His uncle. I think got I, I, think shot I made or that. His up. nephew got shot. I, th- I think made I made that, that up during because that's what it sounded that, like. It made it more interesting. So, I guess we'll start on the on the negative end. What would be so besides like astonishing stuff, like what do you think would contribute to it just being a total train wreck? Like, would it be trying you mean, to why mold would too it be a total the... train wreck? Yeah, like what do you think would be a key factor in that? Like, just Mike Portnoy comes back and he's like, "Hey guys, I need to scream on every single track." Or <laughs> well, we know like, he's not gonna do else. that because he already confirmed he's not gonna do that. I, my only thought would be if you go and listen to a lot of the stuff he's done with um, you know Winery Dogs and Sons of Apollo and the other stuff, it's fine it's good it's just unimaginative it's not the classic mike Portnoy stuff that we're used to i don't know if that's because it was a side project stuff so he's not putting as much heart into it as he would a dream theater record now i think he has a little bit more motivation so i doubt that it's going to be like that but that would be my only guess as to why it would not be a great album is because he's kind of it sounds a lot like the stuff that he did on the side but again he's back in dream theater i think it, it, and always whenever there's a lineup change in dream theater it's always the most spectacular album you ever heard right, you had images and right. words followed by uh scenes from a memory and then um a dramatic turn of events those are like three of their top five albums that's okay that's fair yeah i was my ideal world is mike has a fire under him and they give the writing pen to John Myung for every single song. Um, <laughs> and and uh, they sit down and have a nice, friendly, open, supportive conversation with Jordan about just like playing more melodic stuff. And maybe, obviously, you have to throw in the riffage and the alien invasion from time to time. That's just a staple at this point. But as long as it's not every song, and also just in random points, and also just... Like when it's like a chugging, heavy, distorted sound, and then Jordan's like, "Oh, I have a perfect patch for this," and it's like, like that just makes no sense to me. I hate when he does that, and that would be my ideal world. Um, if they just, I did see someone commented, and you would know more about this than I do, which I thought was interesting. They said something. I don't know if it was like a conspiracy theory with the fans or anything like that, but there's some anniversary coming up, and then the one guy mentioned, "Oh." they had ticket sale problems and this and that so but getting mike in for this anniversary they can get ticket sales up i I don't know what they were trying to get at i don't know if there's an anniversary coming up of one of their albums or like a 25 anniversary or something i think it's kind of like getting back together with your ex Uh, it's it's more of you, you were with that person for so long that it's hard to just forget and move on and you're always not not to get um all millennially on everyone but i think it it was always destined to happen and i think mike mangini understood that and i think that's why he was such a good sport about it but i just you know in my opinion mike mangini personality wise was such a great fit for the band because he was so much more like the other guys but at the same time i think that also hurt their songwriting because i i don't think whatever this new album is going to sound like i i there's like a 95% 95% chance that it's not going to be formulaic generic dream theater because if you look at the the stuff that Mike did in the past there were always themes to albums like the one that stands out to me the most is train of thought 
they just they said okay well people really liked the glass prison from our last album so we're gonna make every song really really heavy it's gonna sound real the whole album is just gonna be really heavy it's gonna sound almost like death metal and it's one of their best albums they've ever released uh you had of course scenes from a memory that was a concept album so th there was always a different theme to every album so even if they had their signature sound there was a there was a new exciting theme one, one thing i am worried about is that if you watched his drumio interview he is saying that he's taking a, a little bit more of a step back or he offered to take more of a step back from the writing and from the creative process now that john petrucci has established himself uh. in that role but I think just the, the the way he is, his personality, he's not he's just not gonna if he disagrees with something, he's gonna voice his opinion and he's gonna put a stop to that, which I think is actually even though it sounds bad, I think is a good thing. No, I agree. I think you make a valid point with the songwriting because maybe since Mangini is such a chill, awesome guy, he definitely probably like if John was like, oh, what do you think about this lyric or this riff, and maybe it was like mediocre, Mike might have been like, oh, awesome man, yeah, let me put a beat behind that, whereas maybe. Mike Portnoy would be like, "Man, eh, let's tweak that a little bit," or eh, "That's the worst thing I've ever heard you written. Let's let's redo that," which is important. But maybe, hopefully, Mike Portnoy just said that in the interview to make people think that he's not going to rock the boat. Maybe he's like, maybe John. Hopefully, John Petrucci will be like, "Nah, like I want your input more, but I appreciate you trying not to." To, to cause problems like you've done every single other time in the past <laughs> well and i think <laughs> that's almost a better skill to have in a, in a or a better trait to have in a bandmate and in a musician than it is to actually play your instrument really well great example of that lars lars from metallica he he may not be the most technically proficient drummer he may not be your personal favorite drummer but he he like if you don't know the story of the enter sandman riff the original riff was just so it wasn't the the three repeats of that first part it was just that and then into the next one which kind of sucks compared to what what was originally happening and that was lars lars told kirk no play that first one three times and then do the last part you just wrote there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by the way i i don't know if i told you but you know how my dad's not the biggest fan of metallica because oh yeah because even he's, he wore that metallica shirt. yeah even though he has a metallica shirt that he wears about 10 times in a row every week but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. but no he'll just wear any shirt but he he wasn't a fan because they were kind of the opposite side of what he was into which is the long hair and the tights and the all oh, the tights yeah yes. and the singing about women for every song so the metallica like, wasn't that so therefore crew. they were bad but now he's he's actually so kind of like what I did for you in Dream Theater. I played him the right songs, and now he's he, right. he actually admitted he's like yeah actually these guys are pretty good. I, I didn't really give him a chance back in high school and anything when I listened to him. Um, so, and he, as a matter of fact, I think I did it a little bit too much because he's now a Lars apologist. Sorry, La oh no, I don't know. Why I just said it oh. like that. A Lars apologist. <laughs> uh oh, we went too far. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We got to pull back a little bit pull back yeah i didn't realize the I, I said i think i sent you the video of the nepotism with lars that i didn't realize that helped them like obviously i'm not trying to take any way anything away from metallica they worked hard james hetfield i think is one of the greatest frontmen and and lyricists um you know in metal and just rock in general but i didn't realize uh that was also probably part of the reason they didn't kick lars out as much because his dad had all that money and he bought the equipment and he bought the travel tickets and so, <laughs> um, it makes. Oh, yeah, sense. but you can that say that you can say that about Van Halen too, because uh, according to Eddie, of oh, course, yeah. so it's probably a, a load of crap. Uh, they, the only reason they let probably. Dave join the band is because he had some sound system that they couldn't afford. Right. Also, his dad was rich. I'm pretty sure David Lee Roth's dad was rich. Yeah, that, that's why he had the sound me. system that they couldn't afford. Yeah, exactly. And also, uh, as much as a goofball as he can be. David Lee Roth was the perfect frontman for Van Halen. I mean, he had the perfect style. And uh, you saw the difference when Sammy Hagar came in. Not that all the songs with Sammy Hagar are bad, but it's just, a, it, I think it's like a it's like a half step or a step down from all their other writing. Oh, it's definitely, uh, it's a different era. Opinion. They were definitely a lot more pop oriented. For like yeah, that too, a little more pop oriented. <laughs> 51, Speaking yeah, of which, aren't they going on tour? It's like Joe Satriani, um, Sammy Hagar not alex Van, um john jason bonham and some someone else i forget oh uh, it's not wolfgang no it's a uh, michael anthony 
Yeah, so it's My- oh, Michael I Anthony. I can't believe I forgot Michael Anthony. Michael Anthony <laughs> and like, uh, <laughs> Sa- Sammy Hagar like... are going on tour with Jason Bonham and I think it's Jason Bonham and Joe Satriani. Yeah, and they're going to do a bunch of uh, Van Hagar stuff. Uh, Van yeah, Hagar. they're coming to Tampa, so I was thinking about buying tickets oh, to then going with my I mean, parents. I saw Jason Bonham five years ago when he did the uh what was it the jason bottom led zeppelin experience and he got some bald guy with glasses who sounded just like robert plant and he kicks ass on the kit well he actually played with he definitely did you see it was like 2012 they did uh, your favorite song cashmere oh yeah and they they killed it i actually thought the 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 live version from 2012 is better than the original (laughs) yeah yeah no he he he's his he's his uh father's son for sure i i I like breaking down jason uh, jason bottom john bottom's drumming too because it's just like his creativity and he was the perfect mix of skill and creativity i think just in his rhythm his rhythmic patterns it's just a shame he was a massive alcoholic right <laughs> it's, the, it's always there's always that caveat so he could never just be like except maybe neil pure and i guess pretty much all the members of rush I right guess. never mind other than that's that. why they're rush um, that is why they're rush I, I i have to read goody lee's new book I just wish he came up with a better title and also didn't put his huge face as the What is it, My F in Life or something like that? <clears throat> yeah, it's My F in Life. Uh, and he picked, like, the ugliest picture of himself. Nice. Um, but the book looks good. The beer is pretty good. Um, that's one of the... And I do miss... You know, that's beer. one of the cool things about living in a big metropolitan area like Orlando is that you actually get people come on tour to to your area or and if not you, you're mm-hmm. central so you can just drive to tampa or daytona or one of these places you can see everyone i'm taking yod to see uh, pat metheny uh next good, uh, next good. sunday so next week that's good yeah you have to i didn't realize um he has 25 grammys it's incredible hey, isn't that um, a record or something like that the record is actually held by Beyonce at like 38 <laughs> she holds the yeah I was gonna say not that so, 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 so not that Grammys mean anything anymore <laughs> except when Pat Metheny um, wins them then they matter and Dream Theater then, then they means. matter yes we should have an uh, SIW Grammy top- show to kind of like correct everything we should that'd, that'd be, yeah cause the album of the, the record of the year last year uh, or this year with Taylor Swift's Midnight's pissed me off it should have been out of who was nominated, it should have, I listened to all the albums start to finish. It should have been Lana Del Rey's album out of the nominated because that Midnight's album was was the biggest definition of mid middle of the road like you could ever get. So that's that that sucked. I, I haven't um, heard any of those because remember I'm metalhead now, so I don't. That, yes, that, you are that, metalhead. That's now. my thing. But uh, I, I did you hear the record that Pat Metheny's touring for? Did you get a chance? That's no, called I, I didn't. Uh, Dreambox. Dream box. Okay. I'll have to look into yeah, that. definitely listen to his newer stuff and let me know what you think. Because I noticed a huge shift after Pat Metheny grew up and Lyle Mays, of course, passed away. Is he's he's doing a lot more and, and I like it. It's it's good stuff. It's different than what he did before. Whereas before his stuff had a lot of groove, a lot of energy. Now it's much more somber. It's much more moody and depressing. It's like um, the equivalent of the new Batman movies that they're releasing. It's like dark and, and <laughs> moody and, and, and gritty compared to a lot of the um, Pat Metheny group stuff that he, he used to do. I thought it was pretty good. You know, for Pat Metheny, it, I listened to his stuff more for just, you know, relax to, to, to wind down at night and that kind of stuff. And that definitely delivers. There was really only one big standout to me on the record out of all of them. And that was uh, Never Was Love, I think, I believe is the name of it. It has a really good uh, melody to it. But other than that, everything was kind of, it was good, but it was mostly just the same. Which I think is kind of what oh, okay. you, what I listen to Pat Metheny records for anyway. Yeah, I need to listen to that more. Someone was telling me that at some of his live performance recently, he has uh, robots that play the other instruments, which is kind of insane. Like he programs. Robots? Yeah, he like programs machines to play the drums. I'm going to watch like the bass AI play my Pat Metheny kind. I don't want that. So it's like he plays the guitar, but then like nothing else plays. And then I also he that same guy was telling me he's a huge guitar player enthusiast he he told me um that pat Metheny is known for being very irritable in showtime and like he's hard to be around because he refuses to eat before he plays so he's like hangry and like 
uh, have, <laughs> you seen, before have you seen him talk about Kenny G or in any of these other yes, interviews? I, yeah. The, does that surprise the you? The paragraph. No, it does not oh, surprise me. Oh, not just me. the paragraph, paragraph when he was on the children's TV show. Oh, the children's, yeah, he just... Yeah. Oh, Kenny G. Yeah, fucking through. Kenny G. That's, yeah, so there, there's, there's real jazz and there's good music and then there's Kenny G. The way his face like just completely shifted, yeah. and then he just forgot where he was, and like there's kids around. It's like four kids. He's <laughs> yeah, you get what you got to do to get into jazz. You got to you know go to the record store. You got to get someone who knows jazz, and then then you got to get them to pick out the the five percent good stuff because this is a ninety five percent of Kenny G. That's the stupidest music anyone has ever written, and anyone could possibly write ever. And this is like a children's TV show. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, everybody has to check that out because, well, listen to his songs first, then listen to Kenny G's songs, and then listen to that interview. <laughs> it's, it's so I want to do more. Nothing. nothing beats, I, I want to uh, do more Pat Metheny reviews. Just the thing is, is like, is Pat Metheny like jazz fans are like Tool fans. All of them just are, I guess, are Tool fans on the side closeted because you can't just review and give your thoughts on an album if you did not witness the birth of west montgomery you are not allowed to talk about jazz <laughs> so it, it'll just be like i could go on and talk about how pat metheny is the second coming of jesus christ and it does not matter because how dare you even speak on on the lord's name uh you are not like you're, you're a, a rock channel you're a metal channel you're not allowed mm -hmm. to speak on jazz but i honestly don't care like as not a matter really. of fact good because we have more comments and more more engagement so <laughs> let's let's engagement. do it yeah maybe we'll do the uh dream box album I, I would i would be down for that i would be down for that because i've been getting i've been listening to more jazz going back and listening to the classics too like you know uh john coltrane and stevie wonder and just incredible stuff especially some of the stuff um like a really cool writing technique in uh which i'm sure you've heard stevie wonder's isn't she lovely song off uh songs in the key of life uh, with his progression, he does um, he does the fifth of each uh, of, of each scale, so it like gets that nice resolve as he goes through like the circle of fifths. So he like starts at C, and then he like he he gradually goes down it and then back, and it just gives that like perfect resolve feeling. It's just a really cool writing technique that he did, and uh, he I didn't realize also he um, on a lot of his albums he did like pretty much almost all the instruments. He's a multi instrument instrumentalist. There we go. It was a tough one, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think he's that. got twenty. I think he's got twenty six Grammys, so he's one up. He's like one up on on, on Pat Metheny. <laughs> on Pat Metheny, yeah. Um, so I guess last thing here. Yes, and very quick because my camera is about to die. So if if, oh, if okay. it dies, we'll just do. I guess my I'll I'll do audio. I'll make a funny picture for myself for the, for okay, the ending. Okay, perfect. Very very quick yeah. here, yeah, and we'll get more into it later. Uh, there was uh. Which I didn't realize quickly, uh, streaming artists don't make as much money as you would think on streaming as I, as I thought they would. Obviously, these big top artists are not hurting for I money. I kind of knew that, sir. This is more so for... I was, kind of, I was aware, sir. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> I think everyone knows that's so one for, of the biggest issues of streaming, but yeah. I know. I hope I hope a lot of people know that. Um, so there's uh, the Living Wage for Musicians Act is trying to be passed and it would create a new payment system with the artist compensation royalty fund ensuring more money goes directly to artists and this is how crazy it is they want to be able to get it just so that you are guaranteed one penny per stream instead of the fraction of a penny as it was before so um so step in the right, in the right direction but the tough part about it is too like if you look at the 10k forms of spotify and the other streaming services they haven't made money and just the streaming avenue of their business in the past like five to eight years they just they have a net loss every single year it's just because it, it's a billionaire investor from uh, sweden or something like that so that, it'd be interesting to see they'd have to probably increase the monthly subscription rates to to accommodate they've already been doing that but i do know that apple music pays artists more than any other streaming platform apple music for the win <laughs> You know what else is Happy you know what else is cool about Apple Music? I don't know if they have it on Spotify now, but you can do karaoke for any song. So it'll use AI to cut the vocals out of any song, regardless wow, of without cool. the stems or anything. And we've already had stuff like that. If you go on YouTube and you look that up, you could hear it, but it sounds like crap. It's, it's the worst audio quality you've ever heard because it filters <laughs> out just whatever frequency that is. But Apple yeah. Apple figured out I don't know how they did it, but Apple figured out how to cut it out. 
And, and because of that, I'm actually starting, I'm working on my dad with Pantera now too. <laughs> Believe it or oh, not, because I put on I put on new level for him without the vocals, without Phil Anselmo, and I, I was even into it more. I was like, yeah, I like this. This is pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 hilarious. It's funny. My dad, my <laughs> dad went to a Pantera concert in the '90s, and my dad previously hated Pantera, couldn't stand it. He, I guess he was just dragged by one of his friends, and he just tells me this casually. I'm like, Dad, you went to a Pantera concert with Dime and Vinny. Do you know how many people alive today would kill? To do something like that, he's like, yeah, no, I didn't give a rat's ass. It sucked, actually. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. That's insane, especially tragically what's all happened since then. Oh, absolutely. Oh, that's insane. Uh, the biggest tragedy, I think, uh, of all is that there is that Phil is still out there trying to be Pantera with <laughs> with um, yes. Zach Wild. Yeah, he's like the only one left. There are interviews because... of Vinny, like a year before he died, saying, yeah, no, Pantera should never come back because that would be like trying to have Van Halen without Van Halen. Because yeah, exactly. because um, Dime is gone. The Abbott brothers. Dime, well, not just yeah. that, but he wasn't even talking about himself. He's like, Dime is gone, and no one's going to replace Dime because Dime is Dime. It's like, you're not going to come out there and try to... And then, of course, me, we just talked about <laughs> um, Sammy Hagar coming out and trying to do the same thing there. But I guess that's a little bit thing. different. It is a little different. But as long as money is green, they, those people will do that. Even if, even if I were the biggest Pantera fan in the world, I, I would protest. I would boycott that concert on purpose if that ever happened. Something like oh, that ever happened. Oh, I would happened. too. I would too. Especially, they'd be like, I don't know, I'd be like, if, if it was just James LeBrie and he's like, all right, it's uh, Dream Theater and it's just him. It's like He's like one of my least favorite members of the band, so I'd be like, I'm not seeing that. <laughs> well, yeah, like, uh, yeah, well, it's not just that, because then they brought like Rex Brown back. Bass is important and cool, oh. but not like Pantera. The bass for it's Pantera. Pantera. Yeah, it's, you don't need. You can you can get away with Injustice for All on on that. Yes, yes, you can. Except for some of the some uh. of the stuff on Cowboys from Hell, you got to give it to them. Is, That's yeah. true. Great, great record. We got to review that, that one. I'd love too. to review. Absolutely. I just, like I, I said, I just I can't. It's like at more than fifty percent of Phil Anselmo's vocals are unlistenable, and I don't know why he does that because he's actually a really good vocalist. He's he super talented, and he, he does this guttural nonsense. I hate it. Yeah, Domination's my favorite off that. That's album. a great one. Absolutely love it. Cemetery Gates is probably my favorite. Oh, beautiful song. I just, I just, the progression just started playing in my head. Yeah, me, me nice too. Tone. Actually, <laughs> see Dream Theater cover that. I sent that to you, right? Oh yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. Or, or I nice. said it. This looks like a fever dream. <laughs> yeah, because John Petrucci looked like an emo guy. Oh, John Petrucci looked like, looked like an emo guy. Dave Mustaine was there. There were there was Dream Theater <laughs> covering Pantera. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing and was we, just a big uh, fever uh, dream. Those are beautiful moments. I love Petrucci's just nailing the solo, and then then Dave comes out, just pulls down his pants, and drops a fat shit all over the solo. It was the worst <laughs> thing I've ever. It sounded like I could probably, if I went up there and just just wanted to be an ass and just make stupid noises with my guitar, it would probably sound closer to the original solo than what Dave played. <laughs> but I love Dave, Megadeth forever. I do love yeah. Dave too. Next episode, we should talk about him and uh, will he make a good album again? Because <laughs> It's not looking like it. Oh, that was trash. But uh, man, that was our. Was you know, that was our last classic review that we did. Yeah, I keep thinking when about that. We shot that, that one. Was that it was like October of 2022 is when we shot that. Was that really? Yeah. Oh my god! So it's been oh, it's been a, almost a year and a half since we shot. Oh my god, time flies. Yeah. I mean, to time be fair, flies. we did shoot more reviews since then. They've just been in my we on did. my hard drive that I haven't been able to edit. So there's yeah, yeah they're in the archive. Yeah. But from start to finish, the last Metalhead and Darius, oh sorry, Saint John Patrick and and <laughs> Darius King review that's been published is that is that one? Is that one? Which is a great video because of the the uh, Dave Ellison memes too. Yes. Oh my god, those are so funny. And we, we reviewed the album that Dave Ellison was on for Dream Theater, too, so that's coming soon. Oh, yeah, we yeah. did. Upstanding and Faithful Husband. <laughs> that's right. Upstanding Citizen and face, Faithful Husband. Citizen yeah. and Faithful Husband. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. I All think right, my well, camera's guess, almost dead. Yeah. All right, so I guess we'll wrap it up here. Uh, yeah, stay tuned for whenever we put the next one out. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for listening. Uh, we'll catch you on the next yes, one. Yes, sir.